Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. <sighs> okay, so you might have noticed that the camera quality has gone downhill. I have to film on my phone for this video because I tried to film on my camera, but my camera life doesn't exceed this video length. I was also dumb enough to not buy an extra battery when I brought the camera. So of course I would be able to film on my brand new camera, but I just don't have the battery life for it, unfortunately. So I have to film on my phone once again. We're back to it. This is familiar, right? You feeling at home? I am. So yeah, I'm really, really sorry about the quality decrease. I really hope we can move past it. Please forgive me. Do you guys remember this video here? I'm sure you do because it is the one video on my channel that has 175k views. I watched it back the other day and I realized how much information I actually missed out. People in the comments were just constantly asking me questions about what I covered in the video. But obviously my answers were never enough because it, because like that video sucks, let's be real. So I thought today that I am going to recreate and also add on from that video. So this is kind of like a cockatiel care and tips part two, but it's also like a renewal. It's out of date. Let's push it away. I hope you guys find this video informative. Let's just begin because we have a lot to get through. Now before I start the video I do want to just say a couple of disclaimers that I am in no way a professional. I have owned cockatiels my whole life but that does not make me an expert. I just have a lot of experience with cockatiels and I'm here to share my experiences with you. I want you to only take this video very very lightly. I want this to be a guide for beginners or a video for people who are wondering whether a cockatiel is right for them. I also want to encourage that you guys do your own research. I don't want to sit here and mother you I'm sure that along with me, a lot of other bird YouTubers as well really want you to do your own research, not only for the benefit of you, but for the benefit of your new little feathered friend. I know it's very, very tempting because cockatiels, you know, they're very cute. They're very adorable. Look at that. But they need lots of time, care, energy, toys, and a really nice big cage for them to be able to thrive and live a happy and long life. Here's a couple of questions to ask yourself. Like, do you have the space? Can you handle the mess? Do you know the proper diet that they need? Like, it's a huge commitment. Like you need to be ready. In saying that, cockatiels also live up to 15 years and they can live over that. I've known cockatiels to live up to about 25 years. Also, if you're young and obviously living with your parents, then you have probably commented on a bird YouTube channel saying, hey, how do I convince my parents to say yes? They won't let me get a bird. What do I do? My answer is to maybe just respect your parents because obviously they have their reasoning and you're probably not old enough to have an income, which you're gonna need if you're gonna be asking for a bird because these guys require a lot of money put into them, including their food, their toys, their cage. They're gonna need a cage that's probably about $350, $400, even more. Their toys are about $30 each. It's not cheap, it's definitely not cheap. I have given these girls as much love and as much care as I possibly can at this age. When I was younger, I loved my birds, of course, and they were living a really beautiful and great life, but there were so many mishaps and there were so many mistakes that I could have avoided if I just waited a little bit longer or if I had my own income. So of course I will split this video into a couple of timestamps so you can navigate and go through this video on your own accord But I do recommend watching this video to give you an idea on what you have to look out for and also what you are in for Because it ain't an easy ride, especially for a beginner So I would recommend sitting down, grab a pen, grab some food because we are gonna be here for a while Also before we start I just want to add in a little note that I am not a bird YouTuber Not an advice one anyway I do have my birds in all my videos all the time so I definitely am like somewhat of a bird YouTuber YouTuber, but just not an advice one. This is going to be my last advice video for a very long time only because I really want to focus on myself. I have been struggling a lot mentally lately so I just really want to take a step back and just chill for a second. Of course I'm still going to be uploading every Friday. I just want to keep it light. Also I'm about to start an interior design course so I really want to focus on my studies. I hope you guys understand but I do have some tippers for you. If you are still confused, if you have a question and you can't seem to find the information about it, I definitely recommend checking out the Cockatiel Cottage website. I will link it down below as well as put it here. I actually went on that website and learned all my basics on there when I had my first cockatiel. Now, I also suggest using Facebook. I know, who the hell uses Facebook these days? It's only good for memes, advice groups, and saying hi to your 400-year-old grandma. What's up, grams? And you can add yourself to groups that are focused around cockatiels, and they basically just share daily cute photos of their cockatiels, cute little videos. It's amazing and also people can ask questions to their heart's content so you can ask any question you want and people are going to answer it for you 
Step one, before getting a bird, make sure that you have a local avarian vet in your area that you can easily drive to because you're gonna need one. Also, if you guys have any serious concerns, I really suggest going and contacting your avarian vet. Please don't leave a comment down below asking why your cockatiel is at the bottom of the cage and they're limping or something along those lines because you should be contacting your vet, not me. Your avarian vet is gonna know what's best for your bird straight away and then your bird is going to be getting a treatment straight away. Whereas if you comment on a YouTuber's page that has a bird in it, like you probably won't get a response. By the time you do, it's gonna be too late for your bird. So you need to take precaution. You need to have an avarian vet handy. Now, I won't be talking about how to tame a cockatiel or how to hand raise a cockatiel because that is a massive commitment and probably not ideal for a beginner. It doesn't make you any less of a bird owner if you actually go out and buy an already hand tamed cockatiel. Emma and Charlie were already hand raised when I brought them. They were about 16 weeks old, I think, when I brought them home. So hand raised cockatiels here in Australia are about $150. If you're thinking that's too expensive, then you're in trouble because as I said before, the cage, the food, the toys, the vet bills, that all adds up as well. And that can be really, really expensive. So if you're thinking that cockatiels are more of a cheaper option then you are very wrong. And then pet stores usually, I see this happen all the time and I'm really really sad about it too because this is how so many cockatiels and birds in general get abandoned. So this is really important guys. So when you go to a pet shop you usually have a cage full of cockatiels and they usually range from about $20 to $50 which sounds really really cheap right? That's an absolute bargain. So I call them Avery birds. They're not hand tamed at all. They have a really hard bite to them and they also will be very 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 skittish and very very scared of you. Those birds will also never have the complete trust for you. You might be able to have them on your hand and you might be able to have them on your shoulder but you'll never be able to give them a nice little pat like I am with Emma. You're gonna be disappointed. You're gonna get at home. It's gonna bite you really hard. You're gonna get mad. It's not loving. It's not gentle. So please don't go out and get the cheapest option that you can because it's not gonna be what you want. And I see this happen so many times in the comments below. People being like, I brought home this bird and it's like not loving me. What do I do? Another thing to mention as well, obviously when you bring home a hand-raised cockatiel, it's still going to be very skittish at first. Like, like you have to earn their trust and you just have to be really patient. Obviously I'm not going to talk about that anymore. There's heaps of videos and you can obviously Google. So cockatiels are social creatures. They love spending time with their loved one. Even if you're just having them on your shoulder or on your knee in this instance, Emma and me are just chilling right now. If you do have any other commitments like work, school or uni, then you really need to think about whether a cockatiel is the perfect pet for you or not, or whether getting a companion for your bird is ideal. School is stressful, especially coming up to your last few years of school, like that is a really stressful time and you probably won't be able to give your bird the attention that they desire. Same with uni, but it is doable. Getting a companion can help your bird not feel so alone while you're away with work or school or whatever but then you have the responsibility of two cockatiels which means twice the food twice the vet bills twice the mess and twice the noise i did say this in my last cockatiel video but i'm going to say it again because it's really really important cockatiels revolve their whole world around you you're their everything and that's why it's important for you to treat them like they are your everything they aren't decor they aren't furniture they can't just be pushed back into the corner once your bird phase is over you know this right here is living she's breathing she's feeling she has a life as well and you've got to make sure that that life is going to be 10 out of 10. but yes you can get a companion for your bird if you feel like they're going to be a little bit lonely when you go to work or when you go to school. You just need to make sure that you're putting in twice the effort now. Toxic household things. You need to be mindful that when you bring home a bird, or if you're thinking about bringing home a bird, that you need to bird-proof your home. There are actually a lot of dangers in your home that could potentially kill your new feathered friends, so it's really, really good to be cautious, please. <laughs> Obviously, I can't list and talk about every little thing because it's a long list. I'll be here all day, so I'm going to leave the link down below and I need you to read through it thoroughly because these things can shorten the lifespan of your bird, unfortunately. If you are unsure about buying something because you're not sure whether it's safe for birds or not, I recommend going onto those Facebook pages and asking about it because I'm sure someone will know the answer. So you need to be incredibly mindful when you're buying cookware and appliances. So non-stick coating on products is very lethal to birds. Teflon is a very popular one. Teflon is also not really good for humans. It is quite bad for us as well. Not only are you going to be doing your birds some good by getting rid of Teflon products, but you're going to be doing yourself some good. So yeah, Teflon is a super common one to stay away from. If you have Teflon coating on your products, get rid of it ASAP because it could kill your bird instantly. PTFE is also another one to look out for, which is quite common in a lot of non-stick 
stick coatings as well. Basically anything on stick, get rid of those. But there are alternatives like stainless steel, aluminium, cast iron, or enamel cookware. I know that when I go shopping for cookware, I always make sure that the products are telling me on the label that it is PFOA and PFAE free. So I've got a little list here, so don't mind me looking over here. Self-cleaning ovens, cake pans, deep fryers, irons, blow dryers, curling irons, and hair straighteners are just some appliances that you should deeply research as well. Cockatiel Cottage covers this really thoroughly, so I 100% recommend reading their website on toxic household things. A couple of other things that you should never use around your birds. Chemical odors such as varnish, paint, bleach, perfumes, deodorants, air sprays, air fresheners, bug sprays, candles, diffusers, essential oils, are just to name a few. Birds obviously don't have the same respiratory systems as us, so they can't actually filter through the bad toxins like we can. Even if your birds are many rooms away from where the fumes will be letting off, it still can be very, very harmful. Maybe not straight away, but it will definitely take off a few years on your bird's lifespan. <laughs> Now, going on with the toxic topic is toxic food. Now, this is quite a tricky one because cockatiels are companion birds, as I said before. And what do companions do together? They share food. As soon as they see you eating something, they're going to want a share of that. Like, that's their food too. So you need to be really, really careful with what you're actually eating in front of your cockatiel. I recommend putting them in their cage when you're about to have a meal. It's better to be safe than sorry, seriously. Believe it or not, they are fast little thieves. So you need to be educated on all foods that are toxic to your little friend. Tiny little amounts of non-toxic toxic food are okay for your bird as long as they are in the tiniest proportion. So say for instance if your bird accidentally takes a chomp of your popcorn or your rice krispies like it's gonna be okay. Anyway back to the toxic food because that is the important part. I will list a few but once again I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm not gonna mother you like do your research guys. Foods you need to watch out for are avocado, chocolate, tomatoes, rhubarb, alcohol, moldy foods, onions, garlic and seeds from most fruits like apples, oranges, lemons. Also make sure that you are washing your veggies when you bring them home from the supermarket in case they are using any pesticides or any chemicals because you don't want to be giving that to your bird. Also human saliva contains bacteria that can potentially make your bird very very sick. So I recommend no like mouth sharing. That's so gross. I don't even know why that would be even an option. Also if you're sick with the cold or the flu, don't be near your birds as much because they can get sick from you. Like I understand because cockatiels, you know, they need attention every single day, but if you're sick, you need to focus on your health and I think they're gonna forgive you for it because I think they would rather you be healthy and happy than them getting sick from you. Now there are speculations that spinach and broccoli are actually really, really bad for your birds. And it's actually quite the opposite. Broccoli and spinach actually give a lot of nutritional value to your birds. So spinach and broccoli are 100% a-okay. The only thing people get concerned about is that it can block their calcium intake. So all you have to do with that is just counteract that and, and put a cuttlefish bone in their cage, which should already be in there because that is a requirement because it is really good for them. So I've been on YouTube for a few months. Okay, bye. And I can honestly say that everyone will always have an opinion on what you're feeding your bird, what you're doing with your bird, how your bird acts. Everybody becomes an expert, but let me just clarify that only you and your avarian vet know your bird best. So let me just sit you down for a minute and let's chat about their diet. So variety is key. Cockatiels are one of the few birds that can actually have seed in their diet, but it has to be the smallest portion of seed. Seeds are actually quite fattening in a sense. They're, they're like us having cupcakes and donuts. Like seeds are a treat. They should be used as a treat for your bird and not as their complete diet. So sunflower seeds, for example, are extremely fatty. I actually have to pick out the sunflower seeds in my seed mix because it's really hard to find a seed mix that doesn't have sunflower seeds in it. So you just gotta do what you gotta do. Of course, seed proportions should be extremely small in your bird's diet. Your avarian vet will give you the right recommendations for your bird. But as a guide, the seed shouldn't exceed about 20% of your bird's whole diet. So it's, it's a very, very, very little amount. Pellets are a must as they give your bird a well-balanced and nutritioned diet. I use a mix of both the rainbow seeds and the natural seeds. And let me just tell you, they are both fine. A lot of people have an opinion on the rainbow seeds, but honestly, guys, they are fine. All about variety, remember? The pellets 
colour should represent about 75% of your bird's diet. And then the other percentage is fruit and veg. So of course your birds need fresh fruit and veg every week. So when you go grocery shopping, don't forget to pick up some extra fruit and veg for your birds. And then it's all fun and games trying to find out what fruit and veg they actually favour. Birds have favourites and birds have dislikes. So you have to find out what they like. My girls actually favour carrot, spinach, broccoli and apples. And they also love a good chop as well. There are a lot of YouTube videos about making a good chop. Live Laugh Birds makes an amazing video about how to make your own chop and how your birds are going to love it. You can also encourage your bird to try out new fruits and veggies by pretending to eat it. Once again, because they're companion animals, if you pretend to eat something, they're going to want to try it. So that's a way to get them to try new things. A few safe foods for your cockatiel as well. Once again, there's a massive list, so I recommend checking it out. But I'll just name a couple. Uh, cucumbers, melon, pears, kale, hard-boiled eggs, parsley, and basil. They are powder down birds, which means they give off a special kind of dander that usually most birds don't. It's just the kind of feathers they have. So cockatoos and cockatiels have the powdery kind of feathers, whereas conures, for example, have more of an oil-based feather. It's a massive difference, and you can definitely tell the difference when they're kind of next to each other. Now, I covered this topic lightly in my other video, so it might seem a little bit repetitive, but it is important to say cockatiels shed a lot of dander and dust from their feathers. So if you are someone who has respiratory health problems or are an asthmatic then I definitely recommend speaking to your doctor and your aviarian vet about your options there because a cockatiel might not be the bird for you. You can reduce the dander by spraying your birds down every now and then with a bit of water. It just helps keep the dander down a little bit. Jarring them more often and also getting a HEPA air purifier which will kind of purify the room as well as collecting all their dander and dust pieces. Once again make sure it doesn't contain Teflon or any other nasties. And then another option as well is to keep up with the cleaning. So you will be cleaning Cleaning a lot more, obviously. The dust, the feathers, they're just messy. You have to pick up after the seed flicking. Oh gosh, they are literally toddlers with wings. Birds also mulch their feathers two to three times a year. The entire process from losing an old feather to growing a new one is about 10 weeks. Yeah, if you don't want to be picking up feathers two to three times a year, then a bird is not for you. The birds also poop every 15 to 20 minutes. It's great fun. You can train your bird to go to their cage and poop, but sometimes accidents happen. Poop can just end up all over the place, honestly. So be prepared to constantly be washing your clothes and your bedding all the time. Tissues and baby wipes are gonna be your best friends. Obviously get baby wipes that are fragrance free. They are essential for bird owners because they're going to help you clean up the poop. So if you can't handle the poop or you're having doubts about a bird because of the pooping, then I probably would say that a bird is not for you because they're gonna poop. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't help the fact that they're gonna poop. Also in saying that, with your bird cage, because they poop in their cage, you're gonna clean it. I recommend using only hot water and a cloth when you're cleaning your bird cage. Never use baby wipes, never use disinfectant. Don't use anything other than warm water and a cloth and make sure that the cloth is clean. Believe it or not, birds need a good 10 to 12 hours of sleep every night. So of course, if your bird doesn't get the recommended 10 to 12 hours of sleep, they're going to be really grumpy. Look, grumpy birds are not fun. Also, if they don't get that, they might be caught napping throughout the day, which is fine. I love a little cheeky nap every now and then, but you don't want it to become a habit. So I have a small night routine with my girls. So I put them to sleep at around 8 p.m. and then I usually wake them up at around 10 a.m., which is usually when I get up. Or unless they wake me up earlier, which sometimes happens. I also put a fitted sheet over their cage at nighttime, which helps in a lot of different ways. So for one, if I accidentally leave the light on in our room while I've gone and cooked dinner or something, they will still have a lot of darkness covering their cage. Another good reason is also because they sleep in our room. Me and my boyfriend will sit on our computers, which does project a lot of light into the room. So having the sheet over the bird cage, once again, gives them enough darkness to fall asleep. Another good thing about the fitted sheet as well is it's going to help with night frights. Now night frights are really, really scary for first time bird owners because it's kind of like what the hell is happening you'll wake up in the middle of the night you'll be hearing all this squawking flapping coming from their cage and you're thinking what the heck is going on basically night fright is they got frightened by something in the night and now they're flapping around their cage so what you need to do in that instance is turn on the light calmly go up to them talk to them let them know that everything is okay you can open the cage and get them on your hand and you just need to check them for injury or any bleeding and if there is any injury or bleeding then you need to contact your aviarian vet which is why it's important to have one close by if they are bleeding i know that you can use cornstarch on the wound to kind of stop the bleeding but once again you should contact your aviarian vet so a night fright is usually caused by either a sound that might sound like a predator to them they might see a shadow casting over which will scare them 
them or you might be moving in your sleep and that could be spooking them too. Some people do give them a nightlight but I find that that can make it worse sometimes because the nightlight can project a lot of shadows and if that's going to project a shadow on something that's going to move, it's going to spook your bird out. And then the last little thing that I'm going to talk about is hormones. Now, I'm not going to talk about this too much because I have a video on the hormones that cockatiels will go through and how to prevent them from getting hormonal. I just want to talk about this one thing because it is very, very important and I see a lot of cockatiel owners do this. Cockatiels will get hormonal no matter what. They're living creatures. Males can get quite aggressive when they get very, very hormonal and then females can lay eggs. So one thing to mention is to never touch your bird on the back of their wings or on their stomach. Basically, don't touch your bird anywhere other than their head or their neck. If you're touching them any other place other than their head or their neck, they're gonna think you wanna have sex with them. And that is not the way to go. Um, other things that can increase hormone levels are nesting boxes. Birds need nesting boxes, right? They're birds. No, they don't need nesting boxes. You do not need a nesting box for your bird. Unless you're breeding birds yourself, but like this is a beginner's guide, you're probably not gonna be breeding birds. Another thing is happy huts. So in this video here where I review my subscribers' bird cages, I actually talk about the happy huts. Not only do they increase hormone levels, but they are extremely dangerous. But yeah, I recommend watching this video so you are up to date with how to tone down hormones and how to not inappropriately touch your bed. So I think I'm going to leave it there because that was a lot of information to take in and I'm honestly very, very exhausted. I'm tired. So thank you guys so much for the endless support and love. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys in my next video next Friday. So ciao for now.